Good day. Hope things are going well for you on this Friday, April 9th, 2021. As we thought yesterday was going to be a tad warmer, and then today even a tad warmer than then. But it looks like the 40s are going to be our life for much of the time. I think we have one day with 50s. I think that's Sunday, maybe. That's interesting. The weather forecasters are good at live Doppler radar <laughs> and looking forward. And of course, we know spring is really a hard one to try to get um, hands around for weather forecasting. But we're thankful we have them. They real, the forecasters help us to figure out what to do. And even though they don't totally get it right, they're about there. <laughs> Well, today I'm going to share with you our second reading for Sunday. It's from 1 John. And I wanted to share with you some an introduction to the letter. And this is um, this particular introduction uh, just is kind of subtitled A Problem with the New Generation. <laughs> oh, yep, they were having problems with that then too. <laughs> But um, he, they, the stress uh, phrase is um, 1 John 3, 18, Let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. Over time, the author states, common phrases can be stripped of their meaning and applied to something else entirely. Take born again. Um, first coined by Jesus, this phrase was resurrected in the 60s during the Jesus movement. Soon it was snatched up as an advertising slogan to, to describe such things as a used car or even a comeback football player or any other professional sports, right? Christianity has been around so long that people borrow its words for quite different meanings. Jesus the center of our faith is also a common curse word. This tendency to pollute language isn't new. Even at the close of the first century, words were being twisted and drained of their original meaning. When the Apostle John wrote his letters, the Christian faith was perhaps 50 or 60 years old. A generation had grown up in, the Christ in Christian homes and a distinct subculture was already developing. Some people were using familiar phrase, phrases such as knowing God, walk in the light, born of God, but with new distorted meanings. The apostle responded with fire. John knew that a confused, subtle distortion of truth is harder to resist than an outright denial. In the book of uh, first John. John chooses key words like light, sin, Christ, love, faith, and disinfects them, and then restores their original meaning. He points back to the truths behind the words. Repeatedly, John begins with the phrase, if we say, and proceeds to show what actions must result if we claim to live in the true light and to know God. So I'm going to share with you uh, from 1 John verse, chapter 1, verses 1, 1 to 2, 2. So it goes into second chapter. Uh, so we talk about this as a reality check, as another introduction. The reality of God is light. But our confessed reality has been sin. God, God cleanses us from our sinful reality through Christ's death so that we live in fellowship with Christ and walk in God's light. The writer first of First John states, We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it, testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you that we have what we have seen and heard, 
so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we are, have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make God a liar, and God's law, God's word, is not in us. My little children, I am writing all this to you that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and for our and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. Lord our God, as we come today to you in your midst, we realize that we are sinful creatures. We have indeed sinned against you in many ways, by thought, word, and deed, by things we have done, by things we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of Jesus, we ask you to forgive us our sins and lead us and guide us in all your ways. And thank you for the good news, the assurance of our forgiveness that comes through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus the Christ. We pray that you continue to walk with us and help lead and guide us to allow your spirit to make our lives more upholding and useful for your mission in this world. Lord God, we have so many things going on. Help us to continue to walk through life with calm hearts and minds to do your holy will, guided by your hope and love. All these things and anything else you see that we need, please grant us through your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, we are not going to be live streaming the service on Sunday. It will be on YouTube then before Sunday. Um, so, But we invite you to come if you can feel comfortable coming. You are invited to come for live worship, and we're still masking, and we're still social distancing, and having lots of hand sanitizer, and celebrating Holy Communion at the end of the service, as, and you receive the elements as you go out. You are all welcome to join us, and we pray God's blessings, hope, and love be with you. And I want to just share with you this benediction um, as we go into the weekend, and I plan to be with you again Monday in, in this way. May the Spirit of the living Christ fill you with faith and trust, burn in you with the fire of love, enliven your bones, body, and life, and breathe through you the breath of life. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and always. Amen. Thank you for today.